Hi, everybody. Yay, I'm here. I am going to be talking about the great joy of toys. As we start to go into the holiday season for a lot of us, we look at how can we choose gifts that are going to stand out, that are going to really add value to the child's life. How do we choose gifts that aren't just going to be played with once or twice and then just set aside? So how can you make sure to pick out those valuable toys, the one the child wants to play with above all other toys, and the one that, at the end of the day, helps them learn the skills they need to be ready for school? And lastly, gets played with tomorrow. Wouldn't that be great? So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna outline what are a couple of the kind of umbrella ideas that'll help you pick out any toy. You'll have kind of a, a little way to think about, will this be the toy that will last? Will this be the toy that they'll keep playing with? Or will this not be the toy they keep playing with? So how do you pick out which toys are gonna last? So let me give you a couple umbrella ideas. The first one is you want it to be 90% child and only 10% toy. What do I mean by this? Well, I'm gonna tell you a story. So a friend of mine, her son received the best gift. He was so excited about this present, he couldn't wait to play with it. And then he hated it once he played with it. What was it? It was this really complicated train set. It was a wonderful idea. I mean, it took a little dump truck that went around to the other side and then dumped the sand. And then it would go back and pick up some more sand. And boy, is that fun to watch. But the minute you touch it, it breaks. You can't touch it. So here's this two-year-old wanting to play with this train, but it's like, no, don't touch. Because if he does, then it'll fall off the tracks, the sand will fall, it won't finish. Too complicated. That was 90% toy, 10% child. So the child doesn't get to manipulate it, put it in his mouth, experiment with it, see how it works, help make it work in all different sorts of ways. It doesn't get his brain on fire, excited about playing. It got him crying, screaming, and frustrated because he couldn't work it. And the minute he touched it, he messed it up. So first of all, pick that toy that's going to be so easy to manipulate for the child and help their brain really get engaged. So I'm going to tell you a couple more concepts and then I'm going to tell you the toys that meet these concepts. I'm sure you know some too, so get ready to share the toys you know meet these ideas. So 90% child, 10% toy. Second one, open-ended. So I remember my daughter wanted so badly this this um, little, it was a uh, um, Barbie that spun in a circle. She'd seen the commercial of the ballerina Barbie. It looked so exciting. It wasn't open-ended. All you do is push the button and it turns in circles. She played with it really great for about 45 minutes and then it sat in the toy box. Not a good investment of your 20 bucks to get a toy that's not open-ended, something that they can really manipulate. The third one, independent play. How many times have you wished your kids would play independently more? <laughs> Spend more time really engaging with a toy. So that's what we want to look for toys that they can engage without you. You don't have to direct it. You don't have to tell the child how to play with it. They can direct it in many different ways. And the last thing to remember when you're purchasing a toy for a child is less is more. They do not need a lot of toys. As a matter of fact, they've done some research and they looked at, wow, if an entire toy area is full of toys, the child plays with it less, engages in the toys less deeply, and doesn't have as long of a play bout. So really, if you have a shelf that just has a few toys on it, they will play with the toys more than they will otherwise. So you don't have to get them 10 presents. Pick one thing that's really meaningful. That's 90% child. The child can manipulate it, independently play with it, and really it has a lot of open-ended ideas of how it can work. And then just give them one or two really important, wonderful gifts rather than uh, you know a whole bunch of other gifts. So what toys fall under these categories? Do you guys have any ideas? Hello and welcome. Han is here, Julie, Holly, Tammy, I'm so glad that you're here. You can be late. I was a couple minutes late. But I want to know from you, what toys have you given young kids that are 90% child, that really get that child playing with it and manipulating it in different ways, that really the child can play independently? They don't need a lot of direction from an adult. 
which ones have you given them that they seem to really love? And then I'm going to give you my, my big top one. But what have you found really engages kids in play? Which toys have you given? Hi, Jackie. I'm glad you're here. So what toys have you given? Because this is your opportunity to learn from each other, not just from me. And then I'm going to give you the four Bs. We'll be talking about that. We'll see if you guys can come up with what those Bs might be. So what? Magna tiles, Legos. Yes, do you see? Think about those Legos. A child has to make something out of it. It's not only one thing they can make, and it can last for years and years, right? When they're one, they might be taking the bigger Legos and arr, putting it in their mouth, really getting that sensory experience and being able, you know, when it goes in their mouth, it goes in the brain. So they're learning in those moments. They're really figuring out our world. What's soft? What's squishy? What's hard? What does the corner feel like? You know, they're really learning about that toy. By the time they're five, six years old, they can build entire castles with those Legos. That is such a great idea, Jackie. Thank you. What else? Legos, Tinker Toys, yes. Markers and crayons, one of the best gifts I ever gave my daughter. <laughs> Huge pieces of paper with things to write on and then the space to do it. She did so many different things and became a brilliant artist. Just having paper. <laughs> Who thinks to go get that for a present, right? But they love it. Generic Baby Dolls, wonderful blogs. You guys are coming up with them. This is awesome. So let me tell you my four Bs. The first one is free. See if you can guess it. I gave this to my daughter and she played with it for six months. Now I felt really bad because I didn't have a lot of money to buy my kid, uh, my new, ch my child, my two year old toys. So I didn't have money to buy her toys. I couldn't figure out what would be a good toy for her. I didn't even know much about it, but I heard something and I was able to get her something free that she played with for six months. Can you guess what it was? It was free. It's B number one, boxes. <laughs> Do you know what I did? She was two and a half and I had no money, but I had some time. So I called up one of those appliance stores and I asked them to save me a great big box they got gave me a refrigerator box she colored it she slept in it she played pretend on it we played with that literally for six months together she even took a nap in it one day so it was a free box but this is the thing to know one and two year olds have no idea what you spent on the gift they don't even know a new gift versus a gift that they already had and haven't seen for a while so you can pick almost anything but this box was a huge gift for her and she loved it months and months later when the other gifts were just sitting gathering dust. So what is the second one? Blocks, you guys said it. Now the trick with blocks, I know it sounds easy, but with blocks what you wanna do is you wanna look at the age on the curtain. So something like Lincoln Logs, isn't really good for younger kids. They have to be four or five, even seven, eight years old. I can't remember the exact age on the box, but look, because the manufacturers put that on there because that is the age that it's effective for. So a young toddler is just gonna stack those blocks up and that's, they're doing their hand-eye coordination. They're learning to work those muscles, the smaller and the larger muscles to build that. And then as they get older, they can start to build it into castles and play with it in different ways. So blocks is a great one. The third one, I was able to bring the best gift to a one-year-old's birthday party. Do you know what the third B is? Balls. Do you know how much it cost me? Two dollars. <laughs> this one-year-old wanted to play with the ball I gave her and didn't even want to open her other presents. So think about balls. They throw them. It works on their large mo uh, motor group. They play with them. They can lean on them, roll them around. Balls are so fun and they don't cost very much money. So we have three Bs. Boxes, blocks, balls, and guess what the last one is? The last really amazing gift that you can give for a child that lasts. Are you ready? Have you guys guessed it yet? Da da da! <laughs> Books! <laughs> Books are loved for years. They play with them. They mouth them. They look at them when they're little. I've even seen 12-month-olds turning the pages of the book, pointing to different pictures. And if you're smart when you choose your books, choose a book that helps teach them the skills they need to learn. 
they don't know the difference. They don't know you're choosing the book to manipulate them to do what you want them to do, but, but it helps actually teach them a lesson they need to learn. So here's a book, for example, called Excuse Me. And in this one, this is a pop-up book. It's really good for toddlers. It says, Mommy says, do you want peas for breakfast? What do you say? No, thank you. I'll never forget. There's a lot of different ones in here on manners and such. And so you read it to the child and they start to live uh, developing manners. It's amazing. So I'll tell you a story and then we'll be at the end if you have any more questions today. And I'll tell you about what we're going to get to next week, which is very exciting. So I was working with a three-year-old on home visit and we were working on manners. Uh, my knees were against the coffee table and she went to walk past me and she bumped into me. Now she didn't have the advanced language skills some three-year-olds have. So she just bumped into me. I said, say, excuse me because I knew the parents were working on manners. She kept pushing on me and I thought, I'm not gonna get into a battle about this right now. So I moved back, <laughs> I let her go by, and then um, as we got into the home visit and when it was book time, I had this book with me and I read this book to her and in it, a little girl says, excuse me, and guess what? About 30 seconds later, she went to walk past me and she said, excuse me, I couldn't believe it, that she was actually now following a direction I tried to give her earlier. Books are very powerful, they make a great gift, and they last a long time. So I hope this was useful for you today. Free ideas, ideas that really match where the children are. And you can add your ideas now in the box too. There's things like dress up clothes, that can be a wonderful gift. Um, you can even make those or get them at secondhand stores. That's a really great way to save some money too. Um, things that they can decorate, paper, pens, markers, but you can also get things like those hole punchers and give them paper. You know, you can give them a writing box, for example, that has an eclipse of newspapers, old mail, um, pens and pencils, highlighter, and you can play with that writing box and in any open way. So there they are. They play and they engage and they have so much fun and you get more done. <laughs> so thank you so much everybody for joining me today. I hope it got you thinking about what are some great toys that not only get children excited but are affordable and help develop the skills they need for tomorrow. So guess what we're going to talk about next week. Oh seek and find books. I love that Jackie. Boxes yes. <laughs> you guessed it. Barbies, especially if they're not, if they haven't watched any media, um, sometimes with dolls that um, come from like, let's say it's a Dory doll, they're playing with Dory. If they've seen the show Dory, they play with Dory exactly like what they've seen in the show. So they don't use their imagination as much if it's a doll that's representative of um, Sesame Street or one of the shows that they see. Don't tell them I told you that because I know the, the marketing people really want you to buy those toys that have marketing behind them. But it doesn't get kids as excited and, and it doesn't give them as much ingenuity when they're playing if it has a prescribed way of playing. So if they haven't seen a Barbie show or a Dory show and you give them the toys, they'll play with it much more with uh, much more imagination than if they haven't. So that's just a little side tip. What are we going to talk about next week? We are going to look at the gifts that you can give beyond toys. There are so many kids today have enough toys. They have rooms full of toys. They don't even value their toys anymore because they have so many. So how can we avoid overindulgence during this season where a lot of kids get given a lot of stuff, maybe even stuff that they don't need? So that's what we're going to talk about next week. How can you give gifts to the kids that have it all? The, the ones that already have so many toys that they might even complain they don't have enough. Or I don't have anything to play with, I'm bored. But yet they have an entire room full of toys. So next we're going to talk about that. How can you give gifts to the kids that have it all and maybe don't even appreciate it? So thank you so much, everybody. Share this. Share it out with your friends. And on my blog, within one hour, there's going to be an article, this video, and some hands-on tips that you can use to share with other people too so that we're all choosing toys that make the most um, difference in kids' life. Lastly, remember their best toy? Do you know what it is? It's you. <laughs> so spend time with them. Uh, don't spend so much time making things, getting ready for the holiday season that you forget together time. 
They want you on the floor, sitting, playing, hugging, wrestling, loving, just as much as they would like that new Barbie. So don't forget that this holiday season. Take care, everybody. Thanks for attending today. And give us your best tips if you want to in the box below. Over and out. <laughs>